signed an MOU between the Indira Gandhi National Open University and the Open University of Kenya to share courses, to share capacities so that we can train our people more. We have a stable economy, we have political and microeconomy stability, we are globally competitive, we have access to many raw materials and being a gateway to Africa, it's also access to many materials and various chemicals like cobalt, manganese, nickel that are found in other African countries. We also have a young, trainable and productive workforce. Kenya boasts a youthful, trainable workforce. Now elsewhere, um, Treasury Cabinet Secretary Professor Njuguna Ndungu denied allegations that the government released 17 billion shillings to pay for fuel subsidy, saying that the program was cancelled as it was costing the government a lot of money. Appearing before the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning, Dungo also responded to statements on the late disbursements of CDF funds that members of parliament are questioning as the House is set to go on recess for this festive season. We cannot inject almost 20 billion and nothing is getting stabilized. So I know it is not your issue, but let them give us that background information. Yeah, thank you very much. In fact, I, you know, even even Googling, you can actually get the price trend of petroleum products. There's one component that has continuously beaten us is the, the, the whole issue of the Ukraine war. Even in Germany right now, if you go, you find the same thing because of that conflict, because they were dependent very much on the, that pipeline running there. So it means it has affected the global prices. And that is why the stabilization became very, very important, because if we brought in the whole price uh, schedule, it would have been d difficult. But thank you very much. We are going to provide one more information set on that. I think uh, CS, uh, I think that's, that's, that's okay on that. You know, you know the, this issue of um, oil prices, I think is also an issue which needs to be dis discussed, uh, not, not only in this committee, but I think the Committee of, of Energy I think they also need to discuss this because there are issues of G2G uh, which we are, we are told that they are going to stabilize prices and, and exchange rates but what we are seeing is different. So this, 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 uh, to me this is not an issue um, uh, which should be handled by Treasury but the issues which, is, which has been raised by um, members I think they are very important for this country. Uh, so uh, I think we can go to the next issue, uh, uh, CS uh, please. The, the next issue, Mr. Chairman, is, it was on um, uh, cryptocurrency and even uh, crypto assets. And I think uh, I want Matu to uh, present what has actually happened. But let me also say there is um, have a, it's an issue that I have faced for many years. And one of them is to try to understand why do we have uh, cryptocurrencies? Because actually everybody thought it was a currency. It's not a currency. It's a trading instrument. But it was actually the, the, the frustration of uh, sending remittances across borders. You recall those years. And one, over the time, over time, Mr. Chairman, when you look at it, cryptocurrencies climb up in value and then they crash. But nobody tells you wh what happened. Nobody compensates you. So it, essentially, that is why we were saying it's a trading instrument and we have to be careful because nobody knows the demand and supply conditions. But on the basis of that, we have actually to ask ourselves, how do we caution ourselves against that? Most of it has been to warn people from buying those assets because as long as we do not know how to influence the supply and demand conditions, then there's very little we can do. And we have seen countries and most people suffer because of this. But I wanted Matu to actually give our central bank a uh, rhyme right because I'm no longer there. I can't talk for them uh, unless it's a general debate like the introduction, how I'm, I've introduced the, the whole matter. But let me also say, Mr. Chairman, we're also suffering in terms of AML CFT regime in terms of how to contain those uh, virtual uh, uh, crypto assets but let, let, let me allow through you chairman uh, allow Matu Mogo to actually maybe say a few things about what we have uh, actually documented here but then we can have a debate 
Religious leaders have faulted the Kenya Kwanzaa government for failing to address the cost of living that continues to bite the clergy under the um, FEICCK, have urged the president uh, to continue or to cease burdening Kenyans with high taxations. And this comes on the backdrop of promises that were set to improve the standards of living. The clergy has also voted NADCO, the National Dialogue Committee, for failing to prioritize issues affecting Kenyans and focusing on their selfish political agenda. Mbotaza tumaini ya wa Kenya wengi uh, Na sana sana tunaona Yale ya walisugumzia ni mazuri ndio Na inaangazia bali sana Lakini kusema ukweli kabisa uh, Tunaona kama wali Waliongea wa, 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 wa sana ile Ile inayo wahusu kibinafsi Ile inayo wafuzu, wahusu kulingana na, na na cheo fulani na cheo fulani zile ambazo zimeakilishwa katika milego ya kisiasa naonekana hiyo ndio sana sana walitumia muda wao kabisa na wakatoshereka na hiyo mwananchi wa kawaida akaachwa pale pale hatuwezi kuendelea kama taifa pasipo na mwandilifu haswa taifa ambalo limekilia kwamba mwongozo wetu ni Mungu when when you are accountable even pe people trust you more and more so if you are not accountable how can you expect people to trust you so trust come when somebody is accountable. When you promise things and fulfill them. If you don't fulfill them, then why do you want us to people to trust you? Now let's take a look at what is making headlines on the newspapers, the Daily Nation, the Standard and the Stam. Now Nation talks of return of Chief Administrative Secretaries, the return of Chief Administrative Secretaries. Officials will report to the Attorney General or respective Cabinet Secretary. Jobs for poll losers. And a new government-sponsored bill is seeking to anchor the position of Chief Administrative Secretary in law as President William Ruto's Kenya Kwanzaa administration moves to align with a High Court ruling that found the Assistant Minister posts unconstitutional. This will pave the way for the appointment of 50 CSAs escalating the public wage, wage bill and weighing down already burdened Kenyan taxpayers. Now, uh, what basically this means is there's always a way out um, for the government because the High Court, in its judgment earlier on, had declared the CS's positions unconstitutional. And if you remember, Kinley, under the former administration, about 22 CSS were there. And then now this new administration put that uh, number double uh, to about 50 CSS that had already been appointed, but were stopped from just getting into office uh, by the... Um, by the High Court. Now, President William Ruto has approved through the Cabinet a bill called the National Government Administration Laws Bill 2023. The National Government Administration Laws Bill 2023 that seeks to amend the National Government Coordination Act of 2013 to establish the CS position despite the matter still pending in the Court of Appeal. Now, reporting the line, or the CSS will be reporting to the cabinet secretary and will also be reporting to the attorney general. Now, the bill has already been signed by the cabinet or approved by the cabinet and has been signed by the National uh, Assembly Majority Leader, Kimani Shungwa. And if you look at um, just the possibility of this happening, is that the Kenya Kwanzaa has uh, the majority in the National Assembly, the majority members of parliament. So it's a matter of how will they vote at the National Assembly? They're the majority, so this is likely to pass. Uh, that is the National Government Administration Laws Bill 2023 that will now anchor this particular uh, CSS position into law. Remember what grounds had been um, brought up by the courts in the nullifying of those positions was that it was unconstitutional. But it being a bill and subsequently a law will mean it is constitutional. And so um, that is just one uh, of the ways that this 
uh, position will definitely get back. And remember, it had quite a lot of uh, poll losers, or those who had lost in polls in 2022, who are now being, um, for lack of a, of, a, of a better word, being rewarded with these particular positions of the Chief Administrative Secretary. So return of CSS state seeks to anchor positions in law. And that is the headline that has made it to the Daily Nation. Also, ex-bank boss wanted a hitman to kill his wife in the United States. Dr. Leonard Thuom with Thiga, aged 52, had a flying career at the Kenya Commercial Bank, where he worked as the group shared services director. A man of few words, he was calm, corporate fixer, friends and former colleague. Uh, but beneath the veneer, he had a killer mind. He flew to the United States less than three months ago looking for a hitman to kill his wife, with whom they had fallen out, only for the killer to leak the motive to the police. So the man is pictured on the papers, Dr. Leonard Thuo Mwithiga, aged 52 years, uh, who was in the United States. So prosecutors have argued that Mwithiga is a flight risk and asked for a bond to be set at $5 million dollars. If you do the math, that could be equivalent to about 5 billion shillings. And so um, Mwithiga is in police custody after uh, uh, an alleged report that he wanted to kill his wife. Also top of the page, condemned cooking oil now safe for use, says Kebs. The Kenya Bureau of Standards yesterday clarified that the edible oil, oil imported by the Kenya National Trading Corporation is safe con for consumption for consumption despite earlier reports that it wasn't and Keb said the imported credible oil had been sampled, re-inspected and tested and found to have met all the safety standards. Now the audible oil scandal of course puts in question about 17 billion shillings um, that initially Kebs had said it is not safe for human consumption but now they say it is safe for human consumption. Also Raila claims tender war behind exams mess as Machogu defends results. To the standard, Ruto amasses power. Ruto amasses power, center of influence, chief of staff Felix Koske to wield unparalleled authority should a bill to parliament sail through. The president wants his Mr. Fixit to, among other things, be the custodian of the government seal domiciled at the Attorney General's office. So page two, Ruto seeks to consolidate power by proposing sweeping law changes. In a bid to consolidate, the head of state has published the National Government Administration Laws Amendment Bill 2023, which has also the Chief Administrative Secretary positions that have been included. Now, the paper reads, whereas the proposed legislation seeks to create the CSS positions and tinker with the National Security Council, it is the immense power it seeks to accord the head of public service, an office currently held by Felix Koske, that is glaring. Apart from supporting the president in facilitating uh, and execution of government business, the officer shall be the administrative head of the executive office of the president and shall be the custodian of the public seal and any other in instruments of state that are not in the custody of any other person. The AG has been the bearer of the seal that is part of the national symbol. And the bill says the chief of staff shall serve the president's pleasure and will be the president's chief of staff. So um, that bill has already been signed by the National Assembly Majority Leader, like I've stated. And so it is a matter of when will it get to Parliament, not if it gets to Parliament. It's just a matter of when it gets to Parliament. Also, um, top of the page, Raila Odinga, tendering wars at ministry behind KCP errors. Raila says there are tendering wars at ministry behind KCP errors, opposition leader has joined calls for review of this year's primary school final exams, saying the results are not a true reflection of the tests. According to Raila's claims, he says, grades in science, social studies, and religious studies were truncated. He also says the rollout saw KCP candidates get graded in subjects they never sat for. He further claims the system deployed could not produce the plus and minus signs. So Raila Odinga says KCP errors were recorded within this year's KCP examinations, even as standarding wars continue at the ministry. Now about 1.4 million candidates sat for their KCP exams with the highest candidates scoring 428. 
and about uh, 8,000 candidates scored more than 400 um, marks. Now, uh, Ndungo also says we have no money for CDF or salaries, as I, um, we've heard a bit earlier on in that uh, footage that was played. Ndungo says the government is broke, no money for salaries, no money for CDF either. Even as crisis depends, 54 pregnancies in one particular school. A story that is on page three, as county raises red flag, as school grapples with 54 pregnant teens. And the school is called St. Thomas Aquinas Chesikaki Secondary School which is grappling with an unprecedented crisis. It is located in Mount Elgon, and the school, you know, has about 54 students out of the population of 500 who are expectant. So that is worth um, a mention and needs a lot of attention as well. Then finally, to the STAM, Ruto's fresh bid to restore CSS post, something similar to what I've just said earlier, Ruto's fresh Bid to restore CSS posts, only half of former appointees likely to benefit in line with the High Court ruling. But the particular bill, the National Government Amendments uh, Bill, does not really put a mark on how many CSS should be there. It, is, it leaves it wide open. So it could be 22, could be more than that. And root of, uh, you know, it reads, the star reads, inside Ruto's fresh bid to restore CAS's position. So some of the names that you're likely to hear include Evan Skidero, Nicholas Gumbo, Millicent Omanga, Bishop Margaret Wanjiru, Charles Kanyi Njagwa, Catherine Waruguru, Wilson Sosion, Dennis Itumbi, among others who were, you know, the, jo the poll losers in last year's election. Also, shock as 10-year-old boy circumcises self in Naivasha. Kenyan in USA accused of plot to murder a woman, that is doctor. Uh, the, the doctor who worked in the banking sector, Dr. Leonard Thuo Mwithiga, as well as Mira farmers live in poverty despite growing acres of crop. How is that so? Also, Raila claims tender was at center of KCP exam mess, uh, uh, a report similar to what has been on the standard. So those are your headlines. The Star Ruto's fresh bid to restore CSS posts. Uh, the Daily Nation talks of Ruto, um, rather return of CASs, return of chief administrative secretaries through that bill in the National Assembly or at the hands of the leader of majority that will likely get to the National Assembly. And then finally, the standard Ruto amasses power as the uh, chief of staff, Felix Koske, will be now the custodian of the government seal, which was domiciled at the Attorney General's office. So those are your headlines on the newspapers. All right, so do stay with us. We are taking a quick break, but when we come back, we are to have a conversation on divorce and remarriage. Most of the time, um, this is a word that is, you know, in line with either a, a, a non-working marriage or it is most likely your fault, but those are some of the myths that we are looking forward uh, to scrap off because eventually or sometimes things really don't work out. So the divorce comes in, but then now the remarrying um, and the stigma just around that. So that conversation coming up with Reverend Anne Gashuki, who also doubles up as a psychologist at the Equity Afia Medical Center, and she is also a premarital counselor and a family therapist. So start sending in your feedback through SMS lines. We'll be glad to sample them. Well, Morning, lives, morning Live returns in a bit. In a fast-paced world filled with distractions, it's easy to lose sight of what truly matters, your relationship with God. Every Tuesday and Thursday, 
we take you on a transformative journey of building your faith, without which it's impossible to please God. A journey of introspection and discovery of who you are in Christ Jesus. For you to walk with God, you should not crumble when you come under pressure. Kama umeokoka, sema umeokoka, mpaka mbele ya president, mpaka mbele ya chief justice, mpaka mbele ya kila mtu. Hiyo ndio kuokoka ya ukweli. Kuokoka ya ukweli. Enjoy a faith-filled environment of worship and ministry of the word every Tuesday and Thursdays from 9 a.m. with that Reverend Felix Kevoy exclusively on EBN TV. Through the morning rush and the buzz, find a voice you can trust, a voice of reason, a voice of direction, and a voice of hope. Morning. Welcome to the Morning Live. I'm Cynthia Nanjala. And I'm Samia Dika. Rise and shine, folks. We hope you are ready for an energizing start to your day. Absolutely. We are here to bring you the latest headlines and trending news stories from the world of politics, business and finance, health and lifestyle, agriculture and sports. So grab your coffee, sit back and get ready for a fantastic morning of engaging discussions and news segments. Join us through our social media handles, hashtag the morning live. This is Morning Live exclusively on EBN TV. Starting this Saturday from 7.30 p.m., Gospel to the Nations. And the purpose that the Lord has for you is a greater purpose. With Apostle Simon M. The Bible says he has a better plan for your life. Where the truth of the Gospel is at home. Walisema unyo maji kwa mkono moja. Kiu yake ipale pale ndiposa tumekuletia wewe mtaza maji wetu. Mkono mwingine ili kukata kiu yako na ari yako ya ufahamu. Naam. Ngoma imechezwa mtazamaji basi hatunabudi kulisakata kukuletea wewe ufahamu wa kaunti yako Tukiangazia masuala ya siasa na uongozi jamii na itikadi maendeleo na changamoto katika kaunti yako Ungana nami Melinda William nami Emmanuel Marwa kwenye makala ya gatuzi langu kila siku ya Jumatatu saa na nusu hadi saa sita na nusu Every Saturday from 8.30 a.m. But we should not be uh, afraid to interpret scripture. Get to know the story behind the Bible. Why was it written? To whom was it written? And what was happening when it was written? Understand, get to know, learn how to properly interpret the scriptures so that you're not deceived. In the book of Revelation, and we have started to enter into the happenings because these are things that are going to take place here, rafter. Join Pastor Felix Kevoy and his team as they go through the different books of the Bible and give you the theological interpretation of the same. At the very introduction yes. of the book of Revelation, the book lays clear what yes. is contained mm. in here. Every Saturday from 8.30 a.m. on The Theology Show, only on EBN, transforming the world. From the fields to your screens. Ronaldo. It is Ronaldo. It's this is where you will get your full detailed story from football, hockey, volleyball. Otavio goes once more. Oh, he's done it brilliantly. Basketball. Long range three. Ah! All in one. For exclusive interviews, discussions, and sports feature stories. Every Monday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on EBN TV. This is the scoreboard. 
through the morning rush and the buzz find the voice you can trust a voice of reason a voice of direction and the voice of hope Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Live. I'm Cynthia Nanjala. And I'm Sami Adika. Rise and shine, folks. We hope you are ready for an energizing start to your day. Absolutely. We are here to bring you the latest headlines and trending news stories from the world of politics, business and finance, health and lifestyle, agriculture and sports. So grab your coffee, sit back and get ready for a fantastic morning of engaging discussions and news segments. Join us through our social media handles, hashtag The Morning Live. This is Morning Live, exclusively on EBN TV. Hello, praise the Lord. This is Pastor Joseph Musajawaza of Unfailing Love Ministries. This week on Victory Through the Word, it's going to be a special edition. On Wednesday from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., we are going to have a Q&A, question and answer session, where your questions will be answered. Make sure, send in your questions early enough. Use the number that is on your screen and we shall have those questions answered. Remember, in this life, iron sharpens iron. When you get answers and counsel from God's word, you'll be victorious and win in this life. Whatever may be bothering you that is relating to scripture, there is an answer through God's word. Make sure you tune in and tell a friend to tell a friend. Remember, Wednesday, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. this week, only on EBN Television. we we'll see you there. In a fast-paced world filled with distractions, it's easy to lose sight of what truly matters, your relationship with God. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we take you on a transformative journey of building your faith, without which it's impossible to please God. A journey of introspection and discovery of who you are in Christ Jesus. For you to walk with God, Enjoy a faith-filled environment of worship and ministry of the word every Tuesday and Thursdays from 9 a.m. with that Reverend is Felix Cavoy exclusively on EBN TV. Every Sunday from 9 p.m. Christian World Today. A look at what is happening in the Christian Dom. We look at revivals, controversies, persecutions, and in-depth interviews on issues affecting the church. Christian World Today with Frederick Njiri. Hello, praise the Lord. This is Pastor Joseph Musajawaza of Unfailing Love Ministries. This week on Victory Through the Word, it's going to be a special edition. On Wednesday from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., we are going to have a Q&A, question and answer session, where your questions will be answered. Make sure, send in your questions early enough. Use the number that is on your screen and we shall have those questions answered. Remember, in this life, iron sharpens iron. When you get answers and counsel from God's word, you'll be victorious and win in this life. Whatever may be bothering you that is relating to scripture, there is an answer through God's word. Make sure 
you tune in and tell a friend to tell a friend. Remember, Wednesday, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. this week, only on EBN Television. We'll see you there. Well, good morning. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. You are watching Morning Live. Well, we are glad you're still here. We're about to enter into a very interesting conversation that pertains some crucial foundation within our societies and that involves marriage, but a different angle to it, divorce and remarriage. So my guest is in here with me in studio that will be helping us take a bit or a little bit more look into this, and that is Pastor Anne Gashuki, a premarital counselor as well as a family therapist who also doubles up as a psychologist. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, um, this is quite an, uh, an interesting uh, topic, Anne, because, you know, you've, st you've said, you know, before you get divorced, you must have been, you know, married. And so perhaps we can start by just understanding these terms that we are talking about this morning. You know, this morning, um, what is marriage first and foremost? If, if, because if people get to have an opportunity to define what marriage is, they most of the time lack or fail to define it because they don't know what it is. Perhaps we can get that from you. Thank you so much, Cynthia. You're welcome. Even for the invitation. <coughs> like you said, in order for somebody to be divorced, yeah. they must have been married. Eh? So allow me to start by defining what marriage is. Eh? Yeah. So I'll do a legal definition 
and also I'll do a biblical mm. definition okay. and uh, so that we can know where to start from but uh, you are welcome all the viewers and um, so marriage according to the Bible uh, is the oldest institution in the world it has its root in divinity mm. because it's God who started yeah. that is in Genesis chapter 2 verse 22 that says then the Lord God made a woman mm. from the rim he had taken out of the man and he brought her to man that is how marriage was started mm -hmm. biblically yeah. yes and uh, getting <coughs> sorry getting married in Kenya you know we have a marriage act yeah. 2014 it is defined as the voluntary union of a man and a woman mm. whether in a monogamous marriage or polygamous union and registered in accordance with the act mm -hmm. yeah and we also have different kinds of marriages yeah <coughs> so sorry so we have different kinds of marriages that is according to the regal act one we have a marriage uh, that is celebrated accordance to the rights of a christian denomination mm. as a civil marriage we also have a civil marriage and we also have a hindu uh, marriage yeah. which is both christian and hindu are monogamous mm -hmm. according to the act and uh, we also have customary marriages and um, Islamic marriages. Mm -hmm. So we have different Types kinds of, of marriage, marriage. Yeah. also depending with the faith. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you know, um, marriage is, 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 is um, such a, one of those institutions where a lot of people are involved because, you know, when you're getting married, you've got your families, you've got your parents who have come in. And most of the time, we tend to walk with them along this route. You know, when you have any problem, you'll go to them, to your friends, to your families. So it's sort of like um, a community, how would I put A community project, is that a better word? A community project. So um, now let's talk about divorce, because eventually, uh, some marriages fail to work out, and people tend to now get divorced. So what is this divorce? Yeah, thank you so much. So divorce is the termination of a marriage by a court with competent <coughs> juridis, juridis, jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, so it must be competent. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So um, I'd love us to perhaps take a look at the indicators that would lead someone to get divorced, or for lack of a better word, the red flags. Mm -hmm. Uh, that would lead someone to make that decision of getting divorced. In fact, before you even um, talk of the red flags, um, at what point does someone have to start thinking about divorce? What, what, can, what could be leading to that? Yeah, you know, uh, there are many factors. Eh? One, when people are married, some enter into marriage either by choice or some are compelled. We've seen cultures where people are compelled mm -hmm. to get married to a certain <coughs> person not of their choice. Mm. So maybe after some time they feel no, this was not my choice, this was my, person, my, my parents choice. Another reason why people get married or can be a red flag and somebody may feel I need to come out of this marriage is when there is abuse Okay. which is uh, provided uh, according to, to the divorce, uh, according to the Regal Act, mm -hmm. there are reasons why people should divorce. And allow me to go through them, mm -hmm. the reasons why, reasons for divorce in Kenya, as provided by the Marriage Act, mm -hmm. the number four of 2014. Yeah. So number one is when there is infidelity. Uh -huh. Uh, infidelity it means there is other term mm. um, and it says it has irreversible consequences for marriage yeah number two the provision is provided when there is cruelty mm -hmm. or violence in marriage yeah. 
Is it mm -hmm. just about physical <coughs> violence? Uh, when we now talk about uh, violence, it can be emotional, mm. physical, what we also call psychological. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, because mental uh, abuse, when it is inflicted on a partner or children, it can be dangerous. Eh? Mm. Yeah, it can cause, that is what maybe causes homicides <coughs> and even suicide. Mm -hmm. When somebody is not able to cope with the mental abuse yeah yeah and you know uh perhaps we'll stick on that just a bit because on physical violence or mental uh, abuse uh, most of the time people are not able to really identify this is violence it's just that it's not physical but it's an emotional one emotional one or you know um the mental uh, abuse that you're saying so how are, how does one identify how that looks like yeah thank you uh you know Abuse has a cycle uh, where, you know, an abusive person may present with a multiple personality. So today they are good, tomorrow they change. Mm -hmm. So at that point, sometimes you contemplate moving out, mm -hmm. but again they change. Uh -huh. So. Uh, that's why sometimes it becomes very hard yeah. for somebody to to actually uh, decide. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, uh, are we look are we looking at a scenario where your partner your partner becomes um, insultive, oh. always insulting you, you know, verbal insults, or is it just uh, something else other than the insults? Um, when we talk about uh, physically somebody can even injure you and uh, when you talk about emotionally there is a lot to do with insult insult mm. and also you know <coughs> like if somebody when we are talking about emotionally when you are tortured emotionally mm. can you imagine like when there is in infidelity uh -huh. uh, we've, we've had people whose spouses have brought mm the ampango candle all the way to, to their the bed uh -huh. that's an emotional torture mm. yeah yeah all right so um the other reasons that you are going to list as well yes thank you so the other reason is abandonment uh the rule says that if one person deserts the other physically mm. leaving their matrimonial home for at least three years without justification yeah. and absconding from marital responsibilities the other person has a valid reason for divorce oh well, that's a um quite a quite a point abandonment uh just three years sounds like a bit too much you know um is one able to really be very patient within those three years or are we or do we look at instances where it could be even be earlier you know three months one leaves their marital home the other one looks for a divorce six or, or six divorce yeah you know legally the provision is three years mm. but you know even with three months a lot could have happened because somebody may even leave the country mm. yeah but According to the law, it must have been three years. That is when now they can process the divorce. Yeah. And what, what, what are these marital responsibilities that you said if one is not able to, to fulfill marital responsibilities? Uh, we have uh, like uh, sexual issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have like if they're not able to take care of the family. Mm. Because if somebody has a family, like they have children and they are not uh, taking the responsibility uh, because you know we, ha we also have children's light yeah mm -hmm. so the children have the light to receive uh, from their parents yeah the right for education mm. to be educated even to be taken care of yes all right go on yeah we also have another reason reason for divorce that is life imprisonment when a spouse is sentenced to life imprisonment, uh, that is also a legal ground of divorce. Mm. Yeah. You are allowed. Mm. Yeah, you are allowed. Mm. Yes. All right. Yes. Another one is um, severe mental illness, where one of the spouse suffers mental illness that cannot be treated, mm. must be certified by two doctors. 
One must be a psychiatrist, and the other one can be another medical doctor. Uh -huh. yeah. So um, if one partner um, is declared insane uh, by mental institutions, the other partner is allowed to say, I need to be divorced from this person. Yes, that is a legal ground of divorce. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so as we have said, uh, yeah. so divorce, uh, there is that biblical provision. Let me also read the biblical provision mm. where the Bible talks of why somebody can now regard a divorce. And uh, we can find it in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, for some of us who are, uh, who are Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay. So, allow me to read that Bible. But the Bible has a provision uh, of when a person can get divorced. That is in Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to 12. Some Pharisees came to Jesus to test him. And they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Mm -hmm. And this is what Jesus responded. He said, haven't you read? Mm -hmm. He replied that at the beginning, the creator had a plan, a purpose, and a plan for marriage. However, when you read, uh, you continue reading, verse 8 says, but even if God had a plan and a purpose and uh, a plan and an idea of marriage, eh? but people's heart sometimes are hard. So it says in verse 8, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife hmm. except for sexual immorality and marries another wife or another woman commits adultery. Mm -hmm. So there is a provision but this provision <coughs> is what we call immorality or infidelity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but if you if you listen to um, the other reasons that have been, um, you know, highlighted as well, it's more than just immorality or infidelity. You know, you're looking at issues like cruelty. You're looking at abandonment. You're looking at life imprisonment. So it's not just any reason that um, you know from what you've read that can get you divorced. Uh, you know, that is now the Kenyan law. Uh -huh. But there's the biblical There is the biblical perspective. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, biblically, the only reason why people should separate is when there is infidelity. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that, doesn't that put a lot of marriages at a crossroad? Because a lot of times um, you'd hear pastors say, you know, be patient, you know, pray about it. If your partner is, you know, um, this and that, just pray about it, pray, of your, pray for your marriage, but that last resort should be um, divorce. So doesn't it put Absi Christians at crossroads? Because um, if they have to follow the biblical way and yet they are going through emotional violence, they won't get divorced. Doesn't that uh, bring in um, some sort of, you know, mixed reactions, I'd say? Yeah, I would say this is now the current marriage dilemma, uh -huh. Christian dilemma that we have. Mm. Because when the law provides, <coughs> the provision, there is that provision, mm. and then you are a Christian, and maybe there is no sexual immorality, but there is abandonment, mm. there is abuse, there is the issue of mental illness. So it puts Christianity, yeah. when it comes to marriage, in a dilemma. Mm. Yeah. So what would you advise Christian marriages to do in, in, in the event uh, that they are going through these other reasons other than infidelity, what should they do? Uh, one, nowadays we have Christian counselors because sometimes uh, there are some things that people can sit down and talk and one can be exploring the reason why people want to divorce, which can be like poor communication. Maybe if there was no good communication, you know, people can forgive each other, 
people can also uh, reconcile. Yeah. But again, when there is mental illness, mm. as much as somebody would really want, you're also risking. Because somebody who is not mentally sober can mm. do anything. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah, of it, we have had uh, issues of suicide mm. and homicide. And maybe I would like to refer to like today's newspaper, uh, newspaper mm. which the uh, next bank both wanted to hit, uh, you know, wanted a hitman to kill wife in US. Mm. So, you know, there are issues in marriage that maybe somebody tries to solve and they are not able to solve. Yeah. You know, instead of killing, instead of suicide, that's why we are talking about a dilemma. Mm. When you are in a dilemma, you better separate all divorce. Mm. Yeah. So as a counseling psychologist, <coughs> I would recommend separation or to an extent, mm. instead of homicide or suicide, better separation. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm, I'm glad that we've issued, uh, we've listed some of the issues that uh, are in marriage that could give you a thought of divorce, including cruelty, ab abandonment uh, from marital responsibilities, or abandoning your marital, I'd say, home for more than three years. As you've stated, there's life imprisonment, then we've got the severe mental illness. And I'm also ha I'm glad that you've been able to say, you know, there's a marriage dilemma, particularly with the modern um, day era. Where you have the, what the Bible says about divorce, what does it allow you to divorce, uh, or what's the reason you're allowed to divorce, as well as the, <coughs> pardon me, Kenyan law as well. Now, there's something that you've also listed here that includes, you know, separation and divorce. You know, it is one thing to be separated, it's, one, it's another thing to be divorced. Um, so, what is, what, wh where does the, you know, line cross on what separation is and what divorce is? Yeah, so let me give you the definition of separation. Mm. Separation occurs when spouses in a marriage stop living together without getting divorced. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. So people can decide because maybe we are not agreeing. Instead of causing harm to each other, why don't we separate or live apart for some time? as we try to process, process what is happening in our lives and maybe even seek reconciliation but because mm. we don't want to harm each other mm. people can choose or because people don't want to harm each other sometimes they can choose to separate yeah. but for some time mm -hmm. yeah so um to make that decision of just separating you, you know you're you're temporarily not living together but you're not divorced. So to make that kind of decision means that eventually you'll get back to each other, doesn't it? There's always like an indicator, you know, let's just take a, what they say, a break, but then we'll get back to each other. Is that what separation is? I would say, um, let me try to like uh, explain. Eh? Mm. Uh, you know, there are some issues. Marriage have issues. <coughs> and maybe it's, uh, a, a couple may have tried to solve their issues, yeah. but they are not able to solve those issues. Mm. They may have even consulted, and even maybe they may have had even a counselor who has come and tried to help them, but they were not able to agree. Mm -hmm. However, they may find that the marriage is becoming more toxic there is toxicity, there is anger issues. They are not able to agree. Mm. So sometimes you may find one spouse just living. And when they leave, they are yeah. not able to come back. So some may live officially, uh -huh. others in a, just an informal way. Yeah. yeah, without agreeing that we have separated. Mm. But some just find themselves moving out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So in, in that uh, particular kind of scenario, you've just moved out, you know, no official document. In fact, um, there's the marriages where you weren't legally, you know, binded. So basically you did a, a come we stay. 
uh, when you're when you're now going your own separate ways because it has not worked out, would we still call that divorce, or do we just say you know that separation because you you are not legally binded to each other? There is no marriage certificate to prove um, that you actually married to each other. Unfortunately, when you don't have a legal document, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I don't laughs> Yeah. It was just come we stay. <laughs> so somehow it may be very hard <laughs> to even look for divorce. Yeah. Because they will seek an evidence <coughs> for you to be divorced. Were you married? Mm. What proves that you are married? And then yeah. you can be in a fix. Mm. No evidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what you'll do is just you'll separate. All right. So um thin line between separation and divorce is you know you stop living together. Uh, but with separation, there's no formal, you know, um, document that you'll sign or formal agreement. But with divorce, there's an actual formal agreement that we are uh, divorcing. Now, I'd love to get your thoughts on this from a psychological point of view. Um, there's this saying that normally goes about that, you know, when a woman wants to leave um, or when a woman leaves her marriage, normally she had mentally checked out from the marriage. So with... Um, Divorce, is that the same scenario? Uh, the moment things are not working out and you decide to leave, normally it's your mind that said, you know what, this is not for me, before you can now physically move your things and, and all that. So is that the, does it apply the same? Mentally you have to have decided to leave before you carry your belongings. Psychologically, I would say divorce is a process. It starts from somewhere. You start... Like, maybe, for instance, eh, mm. uh, you are forced into a marriage. So when you came to that marriage, it was not by choice. So you are not, like, set for the marriage from the word go. So moving out will not be, like, by, you know, something that has just happened. Mm. It's something that you've been contemplating because you feel you are in the wrong place. It was not your choice. Another reason is when you learn that you are not compatible in a way that maybe the gap is too big. Yeah. Because some people get into marriage without really thinking about some factors. Mm. You can imagine, like, um, age, fa age is a factor. Uh -huh. So if somebody gets married to somebody who is older than themselves, they are not compatible. They may try, mm. but they are not compatible. Yeah. Because your ideas, your views, your worldview is very different. Also, uh, you can imagine when somebody gets into uh, marriage and their education uh, level one is a uh, class eight, mm. the other one is a university student or university, uh, you know, candidate or yeah, graduate. Yeah, yeah mm. that is your level of education. Eh? So at some point, uh, maybe they met and they were not able to share their background. And then all of a sudden you find yourself, people, ca some are compatible, but sometimes when the gap is too wide, Mm. There is a lot of work to mm. be done. Mm. Yeah. 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 So it's, it, is, it is, is it important for you to mentally decide to leave before you leave so that we avoid a scenario where you are moving away and your things from a physically abusive or emotionally abusive partner, but the moment they come to you and just say, oh, you know, I'm so sorry about uh, that, it will never happen again, and you're back to square one again. So is it important that you first mentally decide in your mind that this is not for me, I need to leave, before you can now carry your goods or sign that divorce document and leave? Yeah, like, uh, you know, marriage is, uh, divorce is a process. Eh? Mm. This is something that maybe you've contemplated. This is something that is maybe some issues that you've tried to solve and you're not able to solve. But before maybe you make that final decision, it is also good to consider the other side of divorce. Because sometimes people make decisions and they return on 
not even considering the consequences <coughs> because divorce has some effects mm. yeah. yeah yeah all right so these effects um that you've mentioned i'd love us to now take a look at that what are some of the effects of of um divorce what happens to us mentally what changes I would start with stigma mm. <laughs> uh, because you know there is that social community expectation that once you are married yeah. you should, you should stay never married. be divorced <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so when you leave your marriage people might not understand and you know sometimes you can't go trying to convince everybody the reason why you left your marriage mm. so stigma is there it is an effect and that is why sometimes people stay even in abusive uh, marriages because they fear stigma what will people say mm. yeah and you know i i from a personal point of view that is one of the lines that i feel people should never really have to base their decisions on Especially if you know what you're going through is negative and then you say, you know, what will people say? And that is a line that has led to a lot of people sticking and staying in situations that they're not supposed to be. So how do they overcome that stigma then? Uh, you know, is it a matter of just ignoring what people will say and just deciding, you know, I'm done and I'm leaving? Yeah. Uh, at that point, that is why we recommend that even if people are separating, <coughs> seek for counsel, seek for, for help, so that you can know how to cope with this loss. Mm. Actually, we consider it as a loss. So at some point, you will grieve the loss. Uh -huh. So it's a loss. Yeah. You're grieving. Uh -huh. Yeah, because mm. it all depends with the attachment. Mm. For how long have you been with this man, with mm. this woman? Yeah. There was an attachment. They were children, mm. you know. You were already, you were already sharing laws. So there is that attachment. So you will grieve mm -hmm. a loss. Yeah. Yeah. You are used to being two. Then all of a sudden you are alone mm. in decision making, in taking care of your children, as much as maybe you would think <coughs> Niki to Kidogo. But after some time, you find that you are grieving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Apart from stigma, what are the effects of, of divorce are we looking at as well? Children can be affected. And uh, maybe at this point I would want to give, uh, you know, I was in, in um, I did my internship at Kamiti Prison. Eh? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I found this serial killer who gave a history of how, you know, he was in a functional family. But at some time, it became a di dysfunctional. Mm. So they had to separate. And because of that, this child, you know, the one that I met, because now, by this time, he is now an old person, you know, he had to learn to the streets because he could not cope with the situation at mm. home. Mm. Because the mother became very, you know, she was not able to cope with the divorce because she was... Uh, now she became now the breadwinner uh -huh. and uh, at some point she would not find something for the babies to present to the babies and uh, it be life at home became very hard so the child th this uh, young man moved to the street yeah so that's how he also became a serial killer it was a process mm -hmm. but yeah. it affects children it affects their behavior mm. It also affects their perception of life. And then at that point, I would say, it creates a family trend. When people separate, it's like you create a history. There is a history that can be traced. And there is a tendency of history repeating itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is why sometimes you can find <coughs> in one family, no one is married. Mm. Yeah. So we might think, oh, the children are too young, they wouldn't be able to understand what is going on, but they're able to see it and, you know, it's like the, the mind just records it and then it eventually affects their behaviors, affects um, their characters as well. All right, so we've talked about stigma, we've also talked about the effects of the children. Um, and I'd love us to talk about um, 
the effects of the relationship or the effect of the divorce on the relationship between these two people that are divorcing does it always have to mean that they now become enemies you know uh, if i see you coming this way i am going the other way does it have to to get to that as well it all depends with how these two separated or divorced mm. you can imagine when <coughs> they separated and there was like uh, if there was like an attempted uh, you know somebody attempted to kill a mm. spouse mm. you can imagine they they are angry they are they have bitterness towards the person so they don't want to to meet yeah, yeah. their spouse mm -hmm. or their ex-spouses mm -hmm. yeah. all right now um there's this question that uh, lays in the mind of so many when somebody gets divorced due to various reasons and they're still young, perhaps early 30s or late 30s, and they you know, really want to be able to get into another marriage or move on to somebody else. Uh, there's always the question of for how long should you stay divorced uh, so that you're able to now go and do the remarriage to which we'll get to and just define what that is and does it necessarily mean you have to be divorced? So you know, for how long should they be able to just be in that um, state? Yeah, around me first of all to uh, define what remarriage is. Yeah. <coughs> remarriage is a marriage that takes place after a previous marital union has ended. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot. You know, it all depends with how much were, sorry, were you attached to each other. Do you have children between you? Mm -hmm. So for you to consider, okay, do you have children? For you to consider remarriage, there are many factors. And how soon have you healed? Uh huh. Because <laughs> good <some> question. <laughs> how soon and how have you healed? Yeah. Yes, because some people want to show their ex-spouses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. and they have not healed. They have not dealt with themselves and they have not also dealt with the, the separation or the divorce. Mm. Yeah. So you find, you know, we say hurting people hurt. So they come to this other marriage. They seek some, they look for somebody who can be there for them. And then they can find anybody. Uh. And then, you know, those are some of the dangers mm. of... <coughs> People getting remarried without really considering some factors. We also have the issue of branded family. Yeah. Whereby you came out of this marriage with your children. Maybe you find a spouse who also have children. You will have branding issues. Mm. Because you have a family. I have a family. So how do we brand these two family? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now, um, you know, remarriage means you are moving on to a new union after the other union ended. And I can imagine for somebody that has been divorced uh, or have separated because we're having a lot of, you know, the come we stay marriages and eventually people do separate. Doesn't it change how you approach this other marriage because you're perhaps you're a bit more careful you, you don't want to repeat the same mistakes. You're able to be more self-aware. You're more aware of what you're getting into. Is that what happens? I would say yes and no. Uh -huh. Yes. <coughs> when you are forced into... When, when somebody is forced into marriage at an early age, mm. they didn't know what they were doing. It was not their personal choices. So they've gathered some experience. Now when they are choosing the next spouse, they can do it out of experience. They can consider some factors out of the experience that they have had. But again, there is also, also this other case where maybe it was your choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you've lived with this man or this woman, maybe of even of the same age, schoolmate. You are good friends. But at some point, you find that you are not moving on well. So, uh, that, that is why I said you need healing. Mm. 
because you will experience grief. You will grieve a friend. Even if it's an abusive friend. But the reason why people get married, because they love each other. Yeah. yeah. For them to now settle down, they must have had good times. Mm. So whatever now comes in, even in infidelity, sometimes you marry a man and you are not sure about the, the other side. Eh? Mm. So, but you are friends. So whatever happens, Rita, you need to take your time because history can repeat itself. We found people <coughs> who divorce, get married, that is what we call remarriage, and then they, don't, they are not able to settle down because they even keep comparing. Uh -huh. The other one was better because... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, as you also get to remarry, you know, is it important to make aware of uh, your new, I'd say, spouse that, you know, I was once married? Because there are those that hide those particular details. And then now, after the union has happened... Then their former, you know, um, lover or former spouse now comes into the picture. Then you find there's a, a big conflict that has ensued uh, between these um, three people. Yeah, you know, transparency is very important in marriage. Because it will make you to communicate. <coughs> there are some issues that you need to communicate before you get married. Because... They, they matter. Mm. When they are children, they matter. At some point, watakuja kujulikana. You've seen some weddings, eh? Yeah. Where, uh, when they are being officiated, eh? There is a wedding and, uh, the, you know, when they are being officiated, unaskia, mtu ametokea, na kona watoto, na, you know, because this spouse, haku amekon, uh, communicate. Mm. I'm how transparent. Mm. As much as you start, you think that you are starting a marriage, but it will bring trust issues. Yeah. A person we may never trust you. <coughs> yeah. Mm. All right. Now, um, there are also some of these um, things that perhaps also need to be to be made clear, because you're ending a union that let's say was of more than five years. So the, the, the attachment can be so severe. You would have built a life together. You've got property together. You've got this and that together. So as you end, you know, as you've ended this uh, particular union and you're moving to a new union, how do you deal with just um, this kind of thing so that, you know, <coughs> you avoid a situation uh, where, you know, you're in, in the new marriage, but you're still talking about, you know, this is what I own from the other marriage, this is what I do from the other marriage. So how do you, how do you sort that out so that, you know, that's your past life um, now and you're moving into the new life? I would say that is a legal issue mm. because there is the issue of uh, matrimonial property. Yeah. And though I'm not an expert, eh? yeah. <laughs> but uh, legally, there is uh, a row that states on how matrimonial property should be divided. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, perhaps as, as we almost wrap this up, uh, this conversation up, Pastor Anne, there's always um, a mentality that it can be so gender sensitive issue on divorce and remarriage. And you'll hear people say, for a man, it's easy to marry. Uh, or to remarry once again, but for a woman, once you've divorced, you know, remarrying is difficult. Is it really about gender at the end of the day? Does gender play a role on whether a woman uh, remarries or a man remarries? I would say, Patri, uh, there is the gender factor. Mm. Because uh, for a woman, you know, a woman is a natural. So, as a natural, if there are children, Maybe the woman is trying to think, will this man mm. accept me with my burden? Mm -hmm. But with a man, if he leaves the children, for instance, because we have cultures where you either leave your children, other cultures, you have to go with your children, even as a man. Yeah. 
so maybe uh, those factors where now uh, a woman may, may consider, uh, you know, may, may think more about nurturing the children. It may be very hard. Eh? Issues of branded family. It may be very, they, they may take time to get remarried. But for men, also because of the gender factor, I, I think uh, this is something that maybe is there, you know, it, it is actually, it is easier. Yeah, we've seen it. It's easier uh, for a man to, to love again. Yeah. They may take time, but not all. We've seen people who, when even they lose their sp spouses, because some may get uh, remarried as a result of losing a spouse, there is also that biblical provision, mm -hmm. even the rule. Mm -hmm. When you lose your spouse, you can remarry. But people like men remarry so fast. <laughs> yeah. But um, is, there any, is there anything wrong with that? Remarrying <laughs> so fast. Is there anything wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. I would say we talked about healing. Have you healed? <laughs> Have you healed? Yeah. Have you dealt with <clears throat> the divorce, the separation, the death? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because other people marry because they feel lonely. So if that other person doesn't offer according to their expectation, mm. then they feel frustrated. All right. So allow us to take a break. And then when we come back, uh, Pastor Annie will be able to, to just finalize on these uh, three issues of marriage, uh, divorce, and remarriage. So keep your feedback coming in. Uh, we'll be back in just a bit to wrap it up. Stay with us. In a fast-paced world filled with distractions, it's easy to lose sight of what truly matters, your relationship with God. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we take you on a transformative journey of building your faith, without which it's impossible to please God. A journey of introspection and discovery of who you are in Christ Jesus. For you to walk with God, Enjoy a faith-filled environment of worship and ministry of the word every Tuesday and Thursdays from 9 a.m. with that Reverend Felix Cavoy exclusively on EBN TV. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. So we are just about to conclude the conversation on our process of divorce and marriage. In fact, it's marriage, divorce, and remarriage because you said for you to be divorced, you must have uh, been married in the first place. So um, there's separation, there is divorce, and there are couples, or there's at least someone who is contemplating, and uh, they're still you know, not sure, you know, is this the right marriage for me? Is this not the right marriage for me? They're still contemplating on whether they should get divorced. Uh, perhaps as we wind it up, Pastor Anne, you can speak on, on this process and why it is important for you to just perhaps put yourself first uh, before anything else. Yeah, thank you so much. Allow me to give us statistics eh? from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. It report, the report shows that 16% there is a 16% lies mm. in the cases within this decade. Mm. And especially in Kenya, at least one in every 18 household in Kenya is headed by someone mm. who has been divorced, separated. Uh -huh. So a family being headed by a single mm. parent. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So an analysis of two reports in Kenya, Kenya's marriage institution, shows that today, the chances of married people divorcing or separating are 1.3 times 
higher than a decade ago. ago. Yes. Uh, uh, so perhaps the mentality is changing. The mentality is changing. Mm. And um, it's like, uh, like um, I've said, eh? the, we, are, we still have this dilemma. Uh -huh. What do we do? Mm. What do we do? Do we follow the biblical law? The or the, law? the Kenyan <laughs> law? Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Wow. And you know, it, um, that just perhaps puts even more dilemma uh, on somebody that was married legally and is not sure whether to, you know, um, to get divorced or not. But um, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Anne, for coming in. Pastor Anne Gashukia, premarital counselor, as well as a family therapist and a psychologist working with Equity Afia Medical Group for coming in to just speak on this. And, you know, there are so many reasons why you could get divorced, but... Um, uh, perhaps mental health is, is quite important. So you need to put yourself first. If you're in a position where you're not happy, uh, you feel abused mentally, physically, uh, you feel abandoned, then you need to first seek um, you know, guidance either through a Christian uh, psychologist or even just a counseling psychologist and that will give you a better picture of what you need to do in this step forward. So thank you so much for watching, for all your feedback that has been coming in. Um, perhaps I need to mention some of the guys that have been watching including Amos Osigwa, who says watching from Busia. Uh, we also have the Jesus Praise Tabernacle Church, who are following from Umoja, and even Nicole Shanti says following and learning. So thank you so much. We hope that you've learned even much more, uh, particularly as somebody who is in marriage or plans to get married. Um, sometimes things don't work out. It will give you a better picture of what to do. Thank you so much for your valuable company. Coming up at the top of the hour is your faith today with Reverend Felix Kavoy. Have yourselves a wonderful morning. My name is Cynthia Nanjala.